Good morning, folks, and welcome along this Sunday morning to our stream here in Stream Presbyterian. As you can see, if, um, if you were able to look around the church, it is empty except for a couple of us who are here because of the current government regulations. Uh, we are unable to meet in person, but we continue to do our online service. So thank you for joining with us this morning or for joining with us at some stage during this day or during the week. And as we worship together in this way, we uh, would ask and pray that we would truly know God's blessing and his presence with us. Uh, I have a couple of announcements just to make this morning, so if you can bear with me uh, while I do that. First of all, a big thank you to everybody who came along on Thursday past to our food bank and Belfast City Mission drop-off. Uh, it was a tremendous response, so thank you so much for doing that. If you missed it um, or weren't able to get down and you still have something you'd like to drop off for Belfast City Mission, if you would give Barbara a call in the office between Tuesday to Thursday, uh, and then she can arrange to open the gates and to let you in to do that. Um, the gates will be closed for these two weeks again because we have been asked to limit our movement, to limit our travel, um, to essential travel only. Therefore, we do want to be bringing people in and out simply to lock gates. So if you're down in the town, you will notice the gates are closed, but that's for a very specific reason, so please bear with us with that. Um, the next of our giving days is on uh, Thursday the 17th of December, again for church envelopes. And again, because it's just before Christmas and all the Christmas hampers have been done, uh, for food bank storehouse, we're going to be targeting cleaning materials, deodorants, soaps, shampoo, shower gels, things along those lines. So if you'd like to give anything for that, it's going to be on Thursday the 17th of December, again between 10 and 12 a.m. and drop down. We will open the car park, um, God willing, hopefully we are, we're up and running again at that stage. That's what we hope to be anyway, uh, and we'll see what happens. Next week, we are again streaming here from the church. So please log in either on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock or sometime during the week whenever you can. It would be lovely to see you as we do that. Uh, just a couple of, of advanced notices this morning as well. Just to say that our carol services, service is going to be slightly different this year again because of current restrictions. So our traditional candlelit carol service, which would have been on the Sunday evening, we're now going to have on the morning of Sunday the 20th of December. And it will be a traditional service of carols and nine lessons. Uh, what, then what we're also going to do on the Wednesday evening, the 23rd, is a modern carol service or an alternative carol service using some of the lovely pieces that are available through video and such like uh, just as we come and as we worship. So if you'd like to come along to either of those services, again, if you could contact uh, Barbara in the office or if you want to drop myself a little line, a little message, please do so and we can book you in just to organize that. One of the other things that we were going to be doing these couple of weeks, but we can't, uh, is the envelopes for the Children's Society. Uh, obviously, with us being closed, we're missing that opportunity. So don't worry. Um, God willing, on, if we open again on the 13th of December and then on the 20th, those envelopes will still be in the pews so that you can lift them and you can use them. Those are all the announcements that I have this morning. Let me do something really special this morning, something really nice to do. This is the first Sunday in Advent. Hard to believe, isn't it? I mean, it's November, and yet this is the first Sunday in Advent. So our Advent wreath is behind me, and I'm going to light the first candle. Lighting the Advent wreath, burning those candles, is to remind us of the coming Christ, remembering everything that he has done for us. So on the first Sunday of Advent, it's lovely to be able to come into church and to light the first of our candles. Another thing we love to do in church is our birthdays. So I have quite a few birthdays actually this morning to mention, so I have. Facebook is wonderful. Uh, and, and so is social media. Anything to do with social media and the church records is great. So one birthday that we missed last week was Harry Scandritz. So Harry, you were 14 um, this past week. So happy birthday to you for that. 
Another birthday this past week, and she didn't mention this to me this to me when I was speaking to her during the week, was Catherine Gilliland. So happy birthday, Catherine, for Friday. And we have three birthdays this incoming week. Tara Shields, Ian Gilliland, and Johnny Swan. You all have your birthdays as well. So happy birthday to you all. And then another little milestone was reached by a couple in our congregation. Uh, John, you will regret saying this to me. But uh, John and Hazel Gibson celebrated 40 years of marriage um, just in the past week or so. So welcome, our congratulations to, to John and Hazel. Um, and it was lovely to be able to see you during the week. Let's just pause and let's pray. Father, it's so lovely to, to be able to celebrate birthdays. Perhaps it's more poignant for us at this time of the year as we start to think about the coming birthday of your son, Jesus and just being able to, to light the Advent wreath and to remember um, his coming uh, as we think about the birthdays within our own congregation. So Lord, we ask and we pray for your blessing um, upon Harry and Catherine, Tara, Ian and Johnny and their families. And Lord, for John and Hazel as well, thank you for milestone and continue to look after all of these families and bless them, we pray. In Christ's name, Amen. Psalm 100 says in verses 4 and 5, Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His faithful love continues forever. And his, continu his faithfulness continues to each generation. You know, as we start into Advent, we start to look at themes along the lines of hope, peace, joy, and love. But we do that because we can worship our God who has done so much for us. So I love this time of the year because we're able to do carols. So Lewis is going to play for us. Alexandra is going to sing for us. So you want to come forward now? She's going to sing for us a carol. And you can sing along at home. Once in Royal David's City. Let's come and let's pray together. Father, thank you again for this morning. Thank you, Lord, in the midst of a lockdown, we can still 
a few of us gather here in church to be able to lead your people in praise and worship, to lead us all through your word. Lord, these are indeed strange and troubling times, but we thank you that you are always with us. Thank you that you're with us now, whether we are here in church, whether we are sitting at home or somewhere else watching this stream, whether it be Sunday or another day during the week. Father, it doesn't matter. We are connected to one another and we are connected to you. A connection to you can never be broken by anything that happens. And we thank you so much for that. So Lord, this morning, just as we continue, we ask that you be with us, that you would draw near us, that you would still and quiet in our hearts to hear your voice, to hear what you have to say to us now and always. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, I'm going to talk to yourselves now. Um, just to say that after the stream has finished, at about a quarter to 12, there's going to be a couple of things which will bounce up onto Facebook for you. Uh, there's going to be a short animation talking about the story that we're, we're doing this morning. There's also going to be uh, a carol which has been written and produced for yourselves as well. And that's going to come up uh, also. And there's a word search which is going to uh, pop up on the Facebook as well. Uh, so the challenge is getting mum or dad or granny or granda or somebody at home to be able to print out that word search for you so that you can do it. There you go. There's a challenge for um, everybody this morning. Boys and girls, it is the first Sunday in Advent. Now that means it's the first of our four Sundays as we lead up to Christmas, as we start to think about what Christmas is all about. Our Christmas tree is behind us. The lights are on, and if you were able to have a look around church this morning, you'd see a few other lights on uh, as, as we start to decorate the church for Christmas. But obviously Christmas is not about trees and decorations. Christmas is about the birth of Jesus. Now, whenever we think about that, we think about Mary and Joseph. We think about how they were getting married but just after they were, they were getting married, how Mary was told she was going to have a, a baby by an angel, and how scary that would have been. And then they had to go on a really long journey, a journey of about 100 miles to go to Bethlehem. Now, it's really hard to map sometimes sort of to get an idea of how far that is. But I was looking this up on um, Google Maps if you were to leave Mutinards, how far it was even to somewhere like the Giant's Causeway? Any guesses from the folks who are here this morning? How many miles? Good guess. Very close. That was 70 for anybody who didn't hear it. It's actually 75 miles. So can you imagine either having to walk or ride a donkey further than the Giant's Causeway? It wouldn't be very comfortable. It would be a bit sore. Uh, and you'd certainly have blisters on your feet at the end of it. But if Mary did ride on a donkey, then Joseph probably walked it. And that was a hundred miles that they had to go. And they went all alone to a city or a town called Bethlehem, where they didn't have anywhere to stay, where they ended up having to sleep in a stable. Now, a stable might sound grand, but it was probably just at the back of a room or in a cave that was cut out from a rock with all its smelly animals, and that's where Jesus was born. Now, in the midst of all that, I am sure Mary and Joseph were frightened and felt so alone. Even though it was Joseph's hometown as such, because it was where King David was from, and he was part of that family, he would have felt so lonely along with Mary. But even in the midst of that loneliness, they weren't alone. God was with them, looking after them and caring for them. We're going to hear over the next few weeks just how different people came to visit them uh, and to be with them. But just for a moment, imagine that. Imagine being in a place where nobody knows you and something scary is happening and you feel so alone. You know, sometimes we can feel like that. We can feel so lonely, even if we're sitting in like a school and we feel that we've got nobody else around us. Maybe we feel lonely. Maybe we feel lonely as we have to stay in and not go out to the same extent at the minute. But we are never alone, boys and girls. 
God is always with us, always looking after us, always caring for us. And if we feel frightened, if we feel it alone, all we have to do is talk to God. He hears us, he listens, he answers us. God is always with us. On this first Sunday of Advent, boys and girls, just remember that. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you that you are always with us, that you never leave us, you never turn your back on us. Thank you that no matter where we are, we can talk to you, you will hear us and answer us. Father, thank you. And continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let me come and let me read a few verses of just about that story that the boys and girls have been listening to. These verses are taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. We're going to read together verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. As she gave birth to her firstborn born son, first firstborn a son, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Amen. We ask that God would bless the reading of His Word. Let's a, again just pause and pray together. We've been asked to pray for different things over this weekend. Um, I put a posting up on Facebook just to say that the moderator had called us to prayer Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if you've been able to link into that, great. If you haven't had a chance, then please do look at the link which is there. There's a video with it as well. Or go on to PCI's website uh, and follow Home for Christmas, where you will find the prayer points and lots of other resources as well. But some of the things that we are asked to pray for, particularly on Sunday, is strength in these difficult times for people finding God during lockdown, and for the churches that as we continue to look for ways of engaging, that God's family would be encouraged and that we would continue to feel connected to one another. So let's pause and let's pray together. Father, again, as we gather in this different way again, we just thank you that we still can do this, that we can still meet with one another through the medium of internet and through that technology that you've given to us. And Lord, for those folks who don't have that, for those who will listen to this service later on through CD, again, we thank you that they can do that, that they can listen to the service, that they can hear the singing, that they can hear your word being read and listen to the stories which are told. Father, again, through this, We ask that your people would be encouraged and feel connected. Lord, your word is all about how you change us and how we adapt to the situations which we find ourselves in. So, Lord, may that be an encouragement to us this morning, that that we know that we are called to adapt, that we are called to engage with what is going on around us, to bring your love in very practical ways um, and, and help us to be able to do that this morning. Lord, we we do need your strength in these times. These are difficult and strange times for so many people. We think about our traders, our our business people who've had to close businesses again. And Lord, for the, the hardship that that brings to them, we just ask that you would help in that situation, that people would be able to find the financial help from the government that they need. And that whenever things start to open again, Lord, give us eyes to be able to see those who are struggling to be able to help them in whatever way that we can, to be able to support them uh, as they look towards getting businesses up and running again. 
Lord, the most important thing during lockdown for us is that people continue to see you, to know that you are there, that people continue to engage with you and, uh, and reach out to you. We thank you for those folks who have already found you during this time, who have turned to you and opened their lives to you. Lord, for those who have accepted you as Savior, thank you, Father, for what you have done. And for those folks, Lord, just continue to help them to grow in you. Help them to be able to, to, to seek the teaching that they need through these different mediums. Uh, and Lord, just to, to, to draw closer to you during this time. And, and Father, for that feeling of connection, just help us all as we try to reach out to one another, whether it be through a phone call, whether it through being a, 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 a chance meeting down the streets when we bump into one another, or whether it be that we're dropping something off to someone and we stand on a doorstep and chat. No matter what we're doing, Lord, may we feel connected to one another, but may we feel that connection with you, knowing that you are always with us, that you never leave us or forsake us, but that you constantly care for us. Father, thank you. And continue with us now, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. I said just at the very start that some of the themes that we'll be looking at during these Sundays of Advent are hope, peace, joy, and love. Maybe that first one, hope, is the one which at this time we struggle with the most. Thinking about where our hope lies in this time, whenever we just look around and, and we see everything that's going on. That's why the, the story of Mary and Joseph is so appropriate for this morning. Uh, and the title that I had thought of as I, I looked at this and looking at what PCI produced as well, when you look at what was shared with the children and then just trying to expand upon that for ourselves, it's Mary, Joseph and, Joseph and Jesus, a family not at home. I'm sure many of us this year are struggling with the thought of what Christmas will be like for us as a family. Maybe we have loved ones who cannot get home. Uh, maybe we have loved ones who we would want to go and visit, but who we can't do that with. And as we think about this rule of, of three families who can meet together, and we think about the implications of that, maybe we struggle. And we think, where is our hope this Christmas? Well, if that's the way you're feeling, think about those verses that we read in Luke chapter 2 about Mary and Joseph. I wonder, can you put yourself in their shoes? Can you imagine yourself as Mary and Joseph? All their hope for the future um, is built up in the fact that they're going to get married. And you know the excitement that comes from that. You know, th th this is th the rest of their lives, which they see stretched out in front of them. And as they're thinking about that, and as they're starting to plan for that, things suddenly start to change. First of all, an angel comes to visit Mary to tell her that she, has, she is blessed. And she's puzzled by it. She's even more puzzled when the angel tells her she's going to have a baby. And she's trying to think to herself, well, that's not possible. But the angel says, yes, it is. And then she shares that with Joseph. What must have been going through his mind? And then as that angel came to visit Joseph, as he thought about, maybe I'll not marry this girl after all how his hopes seemed to be dashed for the future. But as that angel told him, don't fear. Still take Mary to be your wife because the child that she has carrying is a special child. And it's the son of God. So Mary and Joseph, they're engaged. Mary's pregnant. And then they have to go on this long journey. Now, again, can you imagine how Mary must have felt? How in my state can I travel 100 miles? How can I make that journey to a place that I don't know with no family around me? Because at a time like that, that's whenever the ladies came together. They looked after one another. They had their own midwives who came along and took care of the, of the, of the girl who was going to have the baby, who helped who gave wisdom and guidance. And all of a sudden, Mary doesn't have that. Again, her hopes of that birth 
are fading. Our hopes of our future are changing. So all alone in Bethlehem, they struggle to find a place to stay. The city, the town is hiving. It is full of people. Every door they knock on, every family connection that Joseph can possibly reach out to says, sorry, we can't take you in. Sorry, there's no space for you. Sorry, there's no room in the inn. And then that innkeeper who says, but you can stay in my stable. Now, we, we struggle when we think about that. If you've been to a stable, you think about how stables, well, stables are not that bad. You know, you, th- you think, if you, if, have you had a horse or a pony and you go to the stables? Well, when they've been mucked out, they're not that bad. There's a bit of straw on the ground. It's warm. Yes, maybe the animals have a wee bit smelly, but it's dry and there's a roof over your head. Stable in Jesus' time was not like that. It might have been a corner at the back of a, of a room. Where they- it might have been a cave around the back of a house. It might have just been a bit of a lean-to. It definitely would have been dirty. It definitely would have been smelly. It definitely would have been cold and drafty, only for the the warmth of those animals' bodies. And that's where Mary and Joseph find themselves. Where's the hope in that story? Where's the hope for their future? And then a little baby is born. And as Mary takes that baby and wraps that baby in strips of cloth, she doesn't have any clothing with her, and lays that baby in the feeding trough for the animals, because she doesn't have a crib. Joseph's a carpenter. I'm sure probably at home he had a crib made, something that was lovely, something that was very functional for a baby. He doesn't have that in Bethlehem. But in that moment, we have the hope of the whole world. We have all the hope that we need. Because that little baby, born into that dirty stable, is the son of God. He's the one who has been promised for so many years. The one who's going to fix our relationship with God. That situation might have seemed hopeless, but really it was overbrimming with hope. Now, it's not the sort of hope that we talk about when we say, oh, well, hope this happens or hope that happens. It's hope which is a promise, a guarantee, something that you can always rely upon the hope of a saviour born for our world. Like I said earlier, maybe at this time you feel hopeless and helpless. Maybe you should look around this world and, and as our world pins its hopes on a vaccine and all these different vaccines which have been developed uh, and everything that's been talked about, about Um, which one are we going to get first and who's going to get it first and how's it going to be transported as we see how the world hopes where does our true hope lie do we have the faith to trust in that baby that baby was what the whole bible was written about that baby runs right the way through from whenever adam and eve fall in the garden to the end of Revelation. That whole story, that whole book that we call the Bible, God's words, is about this little baby and about the hope that he brings into this world. That little baby, God's son, our saviour. I trust that in the struggles that we have at this time, in the hopelessness that we see in the nation around us, that we can set that to one side and open our eyes to look upon that baby, to have the hope 
that we need to have. Simply to have the faith to trust Christ. Many of us have done that already. We've opened our lives to God. And as we struggle, let's turn our eyes back to Christ again. Back to that stable. Back to that manger. To realize that we have all the hope in the world. And if you haven't done that yet, if you haven't opened your life to God, if you haven't taken that step of faith, may God open your eyes and your heart today that you would see Christ and accept him. Let's pray together again. Father, thank you for your son. Thank you for a baby who was promised A baby who, yes, was human, but also was your son. A baby who came to be our saviour. Father, at this Advent time, as we think about the birth of your son, Jesus, about what it meant for him to come to this earth, thank you that you give us all the hope that we need, that you pour out your love on us, And Lord, over these weeks, as we reflect upon that story, as we work through, as we light more candles on our Advent candle, as we work towards Christmas Day, when we celebrate your son's birth, thank you that you are always with us. Lord, continue with us now, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen. As we've been thinking about Bethlehem, It's very appropriate that the carol that's going to be sung now is O Little Town of Bethlehem. Thank you so much for singing for us this morning, Alexandra, and for Lewis for playing. Folks, if you want to join in and tune in uh, these mornings now at nine o'clock, um, for the next two weeks, I'm going to be doing uh, a Bible reading and a prayer just to encourage us in the morning. So please feel free to join us as we do that. Let me pray now. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit. Be with us all now and forevermore, we pray. Amen.
Thanks, folks, for joining with us this morning. Take care and God bless.